I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and well, this is Earl Erskine. Uh, Bishop Pearl, I guess, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files here in Salt Lake City. And as I promised, we've got Richard Dutcher with us to, to finish out uh, our, our second episode here. And let me remind you again that he was on uh, a few a couple of months ago in uh, episode 166, I believe. Also, let me remind you, and I think it's up on the screen, three movies at least, I know you've done others, Richard, but uh, three movies at least that you can get on DVD at richardducher.com. They are so wonderful. Uh, they have, and for Mormon and non-Mormon alike, the themes and the, the acting, the storyline, and, and Richard is the uh, uh, director, writer, producer, and actor in, in these. Did I miss one? Well, no, it doesn't that's matter. It. You know, it's filmmaker. It's your, filmmaker. filmmaker. Yeah. And, uh, and they're just wonderful. We'll talk about them just a little bit here. But you were just getting ready to tell us a little story about... Uh, yeah, that was, that was uh, frustrating. Yeah, that was that. like I thought we just started to make out <laughs> when you jumped here. out of the car. Like yeah. I felt like I was in high school again with a girl, of course. <laughs> Gotta, I got gotta be careful got everyone that. understands. Metaphors only go so far. <laughs> that's, that's true. Okay. Yeah, we ju we just started talking about, you are asking me about my, my um, um, the presence of God in my life from an early life, yeah. uh, early age. And, uh, and what I've looked back on and, and thought a lot about is I remember in the early, you know, four and five years old, uh, I would go to Bible schools and, and church regularly, a couple times a week generally. And in the Pentecostal tradition, in the Pentecostal church in southern Illinois. And um, I remember that my, my, um, my, my, I wasn't comfortable with Jesus. I was, hmm. the way that he was presented to me and the way that my, my young brain saw him, he was just a strange man that wore strange clothes and sandals, which... You know, and he was in another country a long time ago, and and in our um, in our in our community, speaking in tongues was was very was common. It was a part of the weekly, mm. uh, I believe it was Tuesday night meetings, and and it frightened me as a as a young child because my I would see the people that I knew that were very you know just regular folk, <laughs> and and my grandpa who was just a wonderful older man who couldn't, had a bad back, but then they would get the spirit and they would be, it would, I mean, that place would rock, you know. <laughs> My grandpa would be doing the Chuck Berry down the middle of the aisle and, you know, and, and it frightened me. I, yeah. you know, Jesus was a character that I didn't know if I wanted much to do with because... If this was it, I yeah, didn't want much to do right. with that. Yeah. And so when Mormonism came along, when my stepfather when married my mother and introduced us to Mormonism, it felt better to me it was it felt it was a very more at reverent. least my introduction to it it was very more reverent and more more reverent worshipful or right something. a little i'm more introverted so i yeah. you know it, it appealed to me more the books you could read you could study yeah you know and it was um a little less dramatic uh right uh, uh, yeah and uh and so it, it's interesting to me that 
it was through Mormonism. But again, my feeling of Mormonism, as I found, it's sometimes it, it's not as universal as I thought. I I took it seriously, you know. When they said the church is about, it's the Church of Jesus Christ, and when they said we we believe in the Bible, well, I read the Bible, you know. I, well, you said that back before when you went on your mission, you realized quickly that you'd read the Book of Mormon several times, the yeah. New Testament, the Old Testament, yeah. and many missionaries hadn't done that. Right, and yeah. and so I I believed in the gospel, and I came to know, I came to know Christ. In Mormonism, which is what I, which some Christians look at me like, what? They don't <laughs> quite get that. But it's very much true. It's, uh, I, you know, I, I was very familiar with the New Testament and and studied it and and so and to me it's interesting. And you said we're going to talk briefly about the yeah. films, but when I made States of Grace, that was very much. Uh, and these these other movies too. When I would express what I felt, you know, the, the stories of people living a life, trying to live a life of faith in a fallen world. And, uh, of course, I was telling them from the Mormon tradition because that's what I understood, that's what sure. I knew, and that's where an audience was. But realizing when I would get resistance from the films, it, you know, the the resistance was cultural. It was like some of the people didn't understand. The, Mormons, the, you mean? Mormons yeah, resistance? Mormons, right. Okay. That they didn't, they couldn't see the 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 Christian message, the I mean, the the gospel, being presented to them because they were so caught up in, in the exterior, the the um, you know a missionary you know sitting on a toilet, you know people couldn't deal with that, you know, and and doing ordinances in films in commercial film, you know, having a baptism or or a blessing in a commercial yeah. film, they, it just blew their minds. And and but most of all, seeing characters who are portrayed as good people but flawed people, and acknowledging their flaws and, and their flaws, sins, yeah. their mistakes, their yeah. your grave mistakes, yeah. and then you know they they couldn't see that uh, the the message that I was telling was more important than the words that I was using, and maybe they didn't like my words, but they should certainly agree with the message. Yeah. And that's also the problem I have with the with the the Christian community. You know, getting Christ, some Christians to watch States of Grace is it's like pulling teeth. And it's, it's so good. It has so, such a message of grace and the different elements of grace. Right. And how we all deal with those individually. How how a father deals with something and how a mother deals with something right. and where the grace is. I think. Exactly. Yeah. But but people see oh there's a couple of Mormon missionaries in this movie. Uh, I don't want to watch it, you know. Then they, they shut off to the message, which of course um, is a shame because yeah. because I, I find that that when we we stro when we put the movie out originally, we would do outreaches to other denominations because it's a very you know the the message is should ring you oh, know be strong absolutely. for every Christian. Yeah. And we would find you know it would take forever, and we'd finally pull in a half a dozen ministers or or and. And they would come out just, they would love the movie. They would just say, oh, how much they wanted to get other people to come see it. But then they had the same problem getting other people to see it that we mm. had getting them to see it because just because uh, there are so many prejudices yeah. that, uh, but anyway, that's beside the point. But that's the answer to the question. <laughs> that, <laughs> um, but uh, sensitive to the spirit, I guess that's where we started. And, right. And having right. that. So you, you've just had some wonderful experiences. Well, I know right. we're going to run out of time again, so I've got a However, to oh, follow up a question that I know you'll get sure. if we don't get to it, yeah. um, there, obviously my, my relationship with, with Christ with, and my um, understanding has evolved and continued, again, after leaving Mormonism, I had to readdress everything yeah. And it's been interesting to me now in my post-Mormon studies of the of the gospel or the scriptures that now I see things that I couldn't see. Do you before. see things differently then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Abs and and I, I I did too. I, I do too. I see. I read the New Testament now, and I think, how did I not see this before? How it was like right in front of me, and I read right through it, thinking that I understood these passages when all I was doing was reading according to the interpretation that I had been That's taught. Yeah. And now it's actually made scripture reading much more exciting again because it it's like this, suddenly you're seeing things that are 
I mean, actually exciting. <laughs> and it's like, wow, it's uh, this uh, process of, of learning and, and yeah. letting the understanding evolve. Um, and that's, that's why I have a problem with when people pick on, you know, oh, your, you, your idea of Jesus is different than my idea of Jesus, therefore you're not a Christian, and you're going to hell. That, I, I can't even comprehend how an intelligent person would think that way because you're, you're, it's like any relationship with anyone. As you, you get to know them and that, that understanding deepens and that evolves. And the person you know three years down the line, I mean, it's the same person, but you, you suddenly you understand so much more about them. Yeah, and, and appreciate uh, much more and understand yeah. more, yeah. 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 Did you understand grace before as a Mormon? I, having family that, that was in the Christian community, yes, I did. So I, you I, understood that. Right, and I took it for granted. I thought that all Mormons believed in it. It was like, well, yeah. I mean, Mormons have their, you know, paragraph one, you know, subparagraph B, you know, works and all that. But, but to me, I, just, I always just was like, well, no, it's, you know, there was, a, there was an atonement and there was a, a sacrifice and... and well, did you sense that works was important in Mormonism? I would. It's interesting. I would at the time, I, I, if asked that question, I would have explained it away and said, no, no, no. It's like you know, it, it's a, it's a gift, and yes, we're expected to do the best that we can. But uh, but I but uh, but again, as you as we just said, it's like now looking back on it, um, I would you know say, oh yeah, I, I was you know. I did believe too much in the works, and I beat myself up over it because I wasn't doing well enough. And yeah. but, but yet I believed that. Uh, but it, it was a warped understanding of of what. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you had to pay your tithing. You really needed to go to the temple. Exactly. Be married for time and all eternity. Exactly. You really had to. To. Uh, right. We don't know what. Uh, the same thing when I was a Mormon, and people would say you know, make fun of me because I wouldn't drink or whatever. You know, yeah. I'd say, well, it's not because my church tells me not to. It's because, it's you know, I, I, I choose not to. But now, it's like, but the that's reality is, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, I mean, the truth is. We don't because the word right. of wisdom. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, okay, on to the next one. This yeah, is good. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so Brigham City comes out just a year after God's Army. You're right. still good LDS at this point. Oh, sure, sure. You're actually uh, the actor in this Brigham City, and um, and uh, your sheriff and the bishop. Right. What a. <laughs> right, right, and then a serial kill. Some serial killings begin yeah. to happen. Yeah, it's a very good story, and it right. and it also portrays Mormonism. And and uh, did you have right. good response from this one? Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it did pretty well. It actually yeah. did pretty Larry well. Larry King said that it was taut and tense and gripping. Oh. So I appreciated uh, yeah, his kind it. word to Larry <laughs> King. And, uh, he liked it. Yeah. In fact, I did have a quote here from somebody, and let me get that. I thought it was just really good. Wade Major of Box Office Magazine says, Dutcher has joined the ranks of the very best and in independent filmmakers in the world. That was quite a compliment. Yeah, that, that yeah. was good to hear. Yeah. Was, <laughs> and I wish that had translated into lots of uh, success and money and everything yeah. else, right? Yeah. Well, I think the key there is independent <laughs> filmmakers, so we, yeah. we have a little harder time yeah. getting people to see, their, see our films. Yeah. But as far as, you know, uh, maybe go back to God's Army for just a minute. You brought up some things, though, in that movie. Mm -hmm. You had a missionary who was questioning mm -hmm. uh, different aspects of the church. It, his, his excuse was that he was actually trying to be apologetic or right. have answers for that. You brought up some other issues. Were you thinking, were you just being honest in your filmmaking? Or were you even, did you have any of these questions or... Were these things you'd put on a shelf? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, I, as I said, I had always been a, a very much of a reader. Yeah. So, and I prided myself on the fact that I could answer any question. And so I, w I was always reading everything. Uh, and, and, yeah, that was what was very much in my mind, you know, very, uh, a lot. You know, faith and, and trying to make sense of some things that didn't make sense. And, um, and conversations with other people close to me about about these things and yeah. most of the conversations weren't welcome at all they uh, just made them uncomfortable right yeah right yeah. um <laughs> let's see oh that's actually that's one thing i learned was when i left 
um, the church, and I, I went through the, an angry phase that I think a lot of people do. Yeah. A lot of people do because you feel you feel betrayed, you feel lied to, cheated, and you just feel duped. And uh, so everybody, a lot of people go through that that angry phase. And, and it's kind of like grieving, isn't that what they call that? Or, you know, you're bitter or you're anger, and then you deal with it, I guess, eventually. And but I was a particularly dangerous person because I knew, I had read so much. I knew so much of the history, and I knew the, anyway, you know, everything. Adam, God, and, and you know, and poly, dark polygamy, deep polygamy. And, and uh, so I would be at a dinner table, and things would start to go along the old suite and somebody would say something that was just so annoying to me, something, you know, some <laughs> innocuous comment about the so, brethren or whatever. And I would just, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, and I would just say, wow, do you know about this? <laughs> oh, boy. And let's talk about Mountain Meadows Massacre. And it was like... Uh, they just don't, they don't want to hear about that. No, they? They, I, I was a most unwelcome <laughs> dinner guest for a few months there. Well, I, somebody said that, uh, I think you, it came out in maybe in one of your interviews, something about truth is everything in Mormonism, but no one wants to learn about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then that's the, that was the strange thing about Mormonism had, had put that in me, that truth is... The glory of God is intelligence. Exactly, yeah. and, and truth, and you have to, you know, and all our examples are of, of when you know the truth, the noble examples, when you know the truth, you live the truth, you know, yeah. you do the truth, and I believed that. Yeah. And it was so strange to get to a point where then suddenly it was like, well, now I have to, I never thought I would have to choose between the truth and Mormonism because I thought they were the same thing. But then when you get to that point, and how ironic it is that Mormonism pre prepared me to have the strength and the integrity to leave Mormonism. That isn't is that interesting. interesting. That's, yeah. that's probably true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And everything that seems to come out, the seer stone, the admissions of Joseph Smith's polygamy and all that just confirms, doesn't it, that that we've made good decisions. These are yeah. these are honest. Yeah, I mean, it, that we can't deny what happened to us, that right. our eyes are open. And right. as you said, that you read the Bible now, yeah. the words are there that I know they were there before, but I didn't read them. I, I just skipped over them, I guess, or I read through it. I don't right. know. Didn't understand. And the farther you get away in time, it gives yeah. you gives you space, the more strange the whole experience seems, and, yeah. and the more interesting, you're, you're, you're removed and you're able to see it with more subjectivity, and you think, wow, how did I, how did, how did that happen? How did, <laughs> how did I not see this yeah. before? I mean, I know, I think, you know, I, I often think if my mother hadn't taken up with this Mormon guy, and I had just become a, you know, Southern Illinois <laughs> kid growing up and I'd been 24 years old and some missionaries had come knocking on my door and said, we're going to talk to you about a guy who dug some gold plates Thanks. out of a hill and about these people that lived here and Jesus came to America. I I would have probably had a great belly laugh and sent them on their way. Yeah. Uh, but somehow, instead, I turned out to be the guy knocking on the doors, telling people, <laughs> hey, we want to tell you about some gold plates. And yeah. it's, uh, it's humbling. It's very humbling, actually, to, yeah. to realize that. And that's something that I... I, I I try to take with me now whatever I believe. I think even in, outside of the religious sense, even politically or, or whatever opinions I have, I recognize that they're, that they're subjective and that I should listen to, to others and be open to other ideas because I, I see how very, how very wrong I once was yeah. and uh, how very sincerely wrong, but very wrong. And um, I don't... I don't want to do that again. Yeah, you know, life's too short. And to you enjoy this again. relationship with with God and with Jesus, and, right? And that walk, that Christian walk, that allows you to to. Uh, well, it allows me to. What I what I love is that um, when I realized that I wasn't making Mormon films, I was making my films, and I was going through a Mormon phase, and they were they were films that were depictions of my spirituality and my thoughts at the time. And so I love the films, absolutely love them. Yeah. Um, but now I can continue to make films, and I can continue to make films that are about my spiritual journey. Yeah. Um, it's just that it will, it, the journey doesn't all take place in one city. You know, That's why they call it a journey, is yeah. you, 
you keep moving. Well, these are all honest and, and certainly all worth seeing. I think they, they all have a great message, Mormon or non-Mormon. Now, in 2007, you were asked or you offered to give a, a letter to the Daily Herald in Provo, I guess, mm -hmm. and kind of explain a little bit of what happened to you. you right. any, anything about that that you care to share? People can look that up on the Daily Herald back then. Yeah, they gave me like the full back page. It was huge. And it Were was, you talking to the film students at BYU primarily? or I was asked to write um, a letter about the state of Mormon cinema, and so I started to write about, so I was writing to basically the filmmakers to say, this is where I think we're going wrong, and this is what we need to do. Yeah, and you then, said something about avoid the comedies and the cliche movies. Right. And, the, and then I realized you know, that I couldn't do that because... I was because I, I, I was like I'm no longer I don't longer believe and yet and so I thought I have to come out with this and let people know because I don't want to be thought of as a hypocrite um, simply because people assume naturally that I'm still Mormon yeah, because so I just doing Mormon film father of Mormon cinema <laughs> so that's when I, I kind of did both things at once and said um, I'm out of here turning it over to you guys good luck um, reaction oh it was a Disaster or what? Well, it, it was uh, it was an explosion. It was an atomic bomb, and that's when everything started to uh, everything just changed. And that's mm -hmm. when the suddenly you know the I, I suddenly had a lot of enemies that I didn't realize I had, you know, and, and, and people who I lost a lot of friends, lost family, lost you know, investors, oh, yeah. lost. Well, I was going to say, and we talked about this uh, privately the other uh, the other day, but, you know, I, I didn't give up a job. I'd retired. And my wife was with me. Uh, uh, my children were out of the home, and so I really, yeah, I've sacrificed some things, but you've really suffered, sacrificed a great deal, and still doing it, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> things would have been, in fact, you made a comment about you've taken the easy way out, or, or somebody was criticizing you, For, oh, you've taken the easy way out. Right, and they have no, yeah, they have no idea how how difficult it is. And and again, the, the, all I can say is I, I don't know how it could have been any different. It's, it's the same thing. It's like I could have remained in Mormonism not believing, pretending to believe, but that's just not, that's not a life I would want. And that's not an example it's of a... See, people this. would say you're such a terrible example to your children because now look at you. You drink wine. You, <laughs> you say naughty words. You make movies that are R-rated. And, and I think, no, my children, I hope if they learn anything from this and think anything, it's how important your integrity is. Your, I mean, living, living be authentically. Honest, be honest you know? with yourself and with... You know, God. to I would not want to be known, thought of as from my children as being the kind of man who would pretend to believe something in order to make his life easier. Yeah. You know, it's well, one thing that struck me too was this the word hypocrite. You know, and I knew how God felt about hypocrites. Right. And and that always struck me as I was coming out. I know this. I know this truth now about. For me, it was the different versions of the first vision, the changes right. in the Book of Mormon and the Book of Abraham, those three right. things. I said, I knew this. I can't deny it. I right. can't be a hypocrite anymore. I couldn't right. go stand and bear my testimony right. like I'm sure you had done many right. times before. Right. It would just probably stick in my throat now. How would I right. do that? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So your children, are they... Have you been able to share with them or talk to them? Do they... Yes, and it, it's been a, a, a healing and a good experience Has because it? I was very worried about, you know, what is this? Is a, it was a big thing for them, and, yeah, and yeah. especially when they have a father. You know, everybody in school knows them as this, the son of Richard Dutcher, and so suddenly their yeah. dads, you know, suddenly people are all talking about their dad and oh have their all of the, have their opinions on my personal life, and <laughs> <laughs> and you know they have to deal with that, and then you know sudden they're Mormons and suddenly their dad doesn't believe anymore, st starts them questioning. And you know it was, and I recognized that it was huge, and it was a, uh, it. That's why I say it was a, it was the, it was a monumental decision to leave Mormonism because, yeah. not only, and then, but then you also wonder, what if I'm wrong, you know? What if I take my family down this path and I'm wrong, because you suddenly recognize that you can be wrong. 
Then, well, what was your anchor? What was what was it? Did you really held on to when you, in those moments when you say, "What if I'm wrong?" I mean, what drew you back and said, "No, I know this is I'm, that experience I'm, that I had that one. that one that one experience of that voice yeah. inside that I I couldn't couldn't and I it. I still of course it's not true. Yep, and. Yeah. So that, that's what I held on to. And we talked about this in our first episode, 166, and that was questioning Joseph Smith answers all the questions that there right. are regarding right. all these things I had about First right. Vision, eight Book of Abraham, that's right. polygamy. Yeah. That's what we talked about. It's yeah. like the trees in the forest. It's like we can argue over this tree of polygamy, we can argue over this tree of yeah. whatever, but when you finally realize there's a whole forest of trees, and you may have answers for each individual tree that would satisfy yeah. you to some degree, but when you look at the entire forest and you just say, well, what if it's all not true? That question answers it all. Well, believe it or not, our time's running away again. <laughs> I did want to ask you a, another question about uh, your Christian walk. One thing that's been important to me, different for me, even from all my missionary experience and everything else, was prayer. Yeah. Have you had a sense of that being different for you? I don't know why I'm asking that exactly, but it just prompted. <laughs> no, for a while after I after the trauma of that experience of everything falling into question, um, I took a break from prayer because I mean you? you know it was a big answer to a prayer. I didn't want any more answers. I, I couldn't I've had enough any answers. More answers. <laughs> Uh, and I, I took a break from prayer, and, but I found when I resumed that it was the same way I'd been praying always. I was talking see, to my God, my See, you may father. be different than I was. I was mm. always praying to my Mormon elder brother or to uh -huh. God, my heavenly father. Uh -huh. Now I'm praying to my creator and, and the person that came down here and sacrificed and shed his blood. And, yeah. So that was different for me. And, yeah. And, you know. But you'd always had that relationship. I had always considered my uh, God as my father because I didn't really have a father. I had a father who left the family when I was very young and I didn't see him again for a very long time. And then I had a stepfather who was not really, not a great father in many ways. And so I always, you know, to me, the only father I could turn to was the father, father who had created me. And so, well, that's that's wonderful. Well, even even now, there's still things uh, that I wish we had had a chance to talk about. I know you were going to do a, a film about Joseph Smith, and yeah. part of that prompted uh, your mm. study even more of yeah. him. And took and me a little did. deeper into yeah, some things. Into yeah. his life. That's yeah. always dangerous to study. Yeah, dangerous to read. Richard, thanks again so much, and I hope you'll all take a, a, an opportunity. RichardDutcher.com and get a hold of these uh, films. They're just wonderful. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.